What's up guys, <clears throat> Obito here with the third part of this PvP series, the in-depth guide for Pirate Rumble. Um, like I said in the last video, I wanted to talk about dev teams in general in this video and I also wanted to talk about Gather Island and yeah, let's start with the dev team in general. So, you can see here just a normal attacking team from me. You know this team from maybe other videos. It's just the uh, regular slasher team with the Halloween law for the special bind. And yeah, what do you want to do when building a dev team? So what first comes in mind is just take the same team you're using as an attack team as a dev team and that should be fine, right? Yeah, sometimes, but most of the times that's just not gonna work out. So what is a dev team and what is it trying to do a dev team is trying to generate tickets for you and also generate points for you because if you don't want to spend that many gems in the game every ticket that you earn as a dev team is also the same in points so for example if you have a dev because someone attacked you and lost you get seven tickets and that is seven points and like that you can hold your position in the ranking without having to play that much. Because if you have a dev team that either no one attacks or just always loses, you will not generate tickets and points and it will cost you way more rainbow gems to rank high. That should be pretty understandable, right? So yeah, there are three different types of dev teams. There's bait teams, there's intermediate teams or fight teams, how I would call them. And there's whole teams. So what's the difference? A bait team, for example, is if you just play this team, but you just take out half of the units. So let's say I show it to you here. Mm, let's go to um, select all and sort after combat power. Then we should find them easily like this, right? Take out this. Mm, then take out the Kizaru and let's find these units as well. Mm, 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 mm. There's one and I probably already scrolled over the other one I think. Did I? Didn't I? Wait, where is he? Where is the other one? <laughs> I'm probably just super blind. Yeah, there he is. Okay, perfect. So let's change the order here. And now you have a bait team or a fight team. This is also depending on the position of the ranking where you're at, right? Because <clears throat> let's say Pirate Rumble has just started a new season and you are playing very early and you know there are many stronger people playing and then you want to have a dev team that's also a bit stronger because you don't just want to give away easy wins <clears throat> but you also want to be attacked right so the team that i built like this is not really ideal because you are trying to use it as a bait team but you have units in this team that are very, very scary. For example, Odin and Law. Don't put two of these scary units in your team because people won't attack you probably because they are scared of Law special binding your team. So just put in Kizaru instead of Law. And now you have a team that is still strong and that can defeat an opponent often and is still not that scary that it wouldn't be attacked. And even if someone uses the same team as you and just has four units more, there can still be RNG that you win the game. And so this is a very decent dev team, for example, I would say for the start of Pirate Drum. And I would say this is an intermediate fight team because if you are wanting to build for the start of Pirate Drum a bait team, for me, that would mean even, yeah, for this team, Actually, just take out the Kizaru as well. 
because uh, you have to understand something about it. This looks that it will lose against everything, but that's not the case. There are so many people in Pirate Rumble playing with teams that are horrible, horrible designed and they will still lose against these three people with their eight units. Because don't forget, if I press on statues here, my team is fully maxed out, limit break plus, full abilities. This is still a very, very strong lineup and obviously you will lose against someone now who has a full team that has the same units, but it's not them you want to challenge with this team. You want to bait the weaker players that can't find other opponents into attacking you. And so, yeah, this is definitely a bait team. Whereas before the team was an intermediate team, fight team. And let's say, for what reason whatsoever, you are playing Pirate Rumble when the season starts and you want to definitely hold your first place or second place and you're pushing and pushing and pushing, then it's obviously wrong to take this team now. Because now what will happen is you're on position one, the people who are farther at the back of the ranking will not see you for attacking purposes and probably like the top 50, top 20, top 10 players will only see you and they will defeat you anytime and catch up to you and you can't let that happen. So. If you're really trying to push at the beginning of the championship or something, then after one hour or two hours of playing where you've used the four-man slasher team, you can switch into the full team just to hold your position. And then that would be a whole team, which is essentially just a full team. I know this sounds a bit complicated, but if you've understood this for the first time, it will get very, very easy after all. So just I, I just show you now how I do it. And then I think this is probably the best way to do it. So let's say we have the preliminary stages. My dev team for the preliminary stages right from the get go will be this. I will use these three units as my dev team. And yeah, this has generated like 20, 25, 30 devs for me and yeah, at, at the single day, if you are lucky you create that at the single day. So yeah, we might ask yourself why, why I'm giving away this information. Well, I pretty much have Gather Island maxed out to a point that I don't really care about pushing so hard into PvP and yeah, if you are watching my videos. <laughs> This is a bonus. <laughs> so yeah, you can use that information how you like. Um, and then at the start of the season, I will use this team and I will let this team actually stay in the dev slot for the first whole day. And yeah, this will generate a lot of devs for you. And yeah, that's for the preliminary stages. So for championship, it's a bit different, right? Because if you are in the championship then, um, there are obviously only players in the championship who have qualified by being top 5,000. And this most of the time are more experienced players because you will have in the championship uh, more likely like six or 7,000 different people because you can uh, take the spot of qualification in the preliminaries more than once. So let's say I do this tactic every time, I will get into the top 5,000 in prelim preliminaries all the time. Then I have to slot in a championship three times, but I'm only using one because it doesn't work otherwise. But yeah, obviously then there are less people in the championship and yeah, this will be a limited pool of players who have a, generally, I would say a better understanding of the game than just everyone in the preliminaries. So don't use this team in a championship. In a championship, I would just start with a four-man dev team, just because that is a team that the experienced players will probably attack because more often than not, they will win. And I attack those teams as well. But at some situations, you will still generate death through RNG and sometimes still through people who still don't know what's going on and are just blindly wandering into this, this kind of team. And yeah, then for the championship itself, when it's going on and on and on, and let's say you've placed in like the top 500. In the top 500, almost everyone is playing a 
Roger, Oden, Doflamingo, Slasher, Dev Team, right? So people will be wary and you will not get that many devs because they are trying to find other opponents that are easier to beat. And there are many, many teams that are just totally underestimated because people think, yeah, everyone plays the slashers, everything else has to be crap. But yeah, that's just not the case. There are still way more really good dev teams that your opponent can attack into and then it's a huge blunder. So, for example, I show you one of my other dev teams. So you can see I have different different teams set up. Some I use, some I don't use. It's just for testing out. But for example, this is my dev team for the championship at the later stage when I'm like place 500, place 100, doesn't matter. It's an in team. It is still super strong. It is also fully maxed out. Not everyone is full limit break plus or cotton candy, but that doesn't matter that much. People will attack this team because they think it's bad, it's not a full slasher team and they can have an easy win. Totally wrong. If you attack this team with a not fully maxed out slasher team, you're gonna be annihilated. And that's why this team is generating so many deaths for me even in a championship. I think uh, alone for this championship season, I got like 70, 80, 90 deaths with this team. Every day I have 10 to 20 deaths, even more sometimes. And yeah, that's just because people don't understand how this game works. Still, even if they are in the championship. And yeah, you should you should take advantage of that. It's not a bad thing to know these kind of things and take advantage of it. And yeah, so this, for example, is the dev team I switch in when I'm in a set position where I'm not going to push it anywhere forward and just want to hold. And so yeah, this team generates points and tickets for me and this is the dev team that I use. So, yeah, I know this is, this is much information, but it's important that you understand that, how, how this is working and that there are different kind of dev teams and you just cannot do the same thing over and over and over again. You have to adjust to the situation. Obviously, this is very advanced, right? If you just want to enjoy this game mode and really just want to have an easy time and don't care so much and don't want to go that in depth that's totally fine i can understand that not everyone likes pirate travel but then just use the form and slasher overall for all the time it will generate devs for you yeah not that many that uh, this um rotation that i do will but it will still generate deaths for you over time and you will still have quite a good time and don't give away too many easy victories. And yeah, obviously for the last part, if you are in the top 100 and you're trying to get to top 100 at the end, obviously change from this dev team to a whole team because you don't want to give away easy victories. And it's a different thing in the top 100. In the top 100 people don't have a choice. There, almost everyone is playing a very, very good dev team and they have to pick the worst of the dev teams that they can attack because you can't just dodge every opponent. Everyone is playing decent dev teams. So then maybe just don't play the normal slasher dev team that is super strong. Play it with two units less or switch out one unit like the halloween law because it's threatening and play something a bit different like i've shown you in the other video what people are playing as a dev team in the top 100 like with jack with shanks crew these teams are still super strong they are maybe not perfect like uh, the normal slasher teams uh, with uh, halloween law or with uh, v3 law and then just having a normal lineup of odin roger kizaru Doffy. but they are maybe like 10% worse, 20% worse, and you will still not give away easy victories and still get a lot of deaths. Okay, that's <laughs> for that. Yeah, that, no, that is that is uh, much information I know, but um, try to try to work yourself through this. And uh, like I said, guys, don't worry about it. If you are not that into pirate trouble. Don't worry about these things too much. This is really the the end game. 
if you want to maximize your tickets, if you want to maximize your earnings in the position and yeah. And yeah, this is it for that part. One more thing, you remember the cheat from the last video um, with the attack and death lineup? Um, in a dev team, it's a bit different than in a tech team. You would have seen that because in a dev team, your units are standing differently. So in a dev team, Doflamingo is number one, Jozo two, Blackbeard three, Anel four, uh, Law five. And one, two, three in a dev team is actually the order how the units are standing in the dev team because in an attack team position three is the tank in a dev team position one is the tank if you remember that from the cheat so Doffy is your best tank in this team put him on one Jozo is a good tank put him on two Blackbeard is also very tanky put him on three if you are using this in team just make sure that Enel and Law are definitely on four and five because you don't want Law to die because you need him to special bind your opponent and you don't want Enel to die because if I press on him I show you his passive ability and that's the reason why I only have 6 units in the team. If current teammates are 6 or less, in type teammates HP up level 5, speed up level 5, death up level 3. So yeah, if he dies, you will immediately lose the tankiness of your team. But if he's in a position where he can't be attacked, he's very safe and you will always have this passive that's super strong. And yeah, his special is also quite good, it's not something amazing. But he will deal uh, 1.8 times damage to enemies in a large range and also give a bit of more death up. So yeah, if this if this anal lives for long enough, you will not lose your defense. You can even with a bit of luck and good RNG beat completely fully maxed out meta teams if you are lucky. And yeah, obviously Big Mom on the bench, you can replace her with... Um, Halloween shanks or other uh, hard hitters like if you don't have them both maybe uh, v1 Sanji 6 plus She's just here that in the first 40 seconds of battle in type teammates special CT speed up level 5 That's not what we are going to do with this team because we don't want to kill the opponent quickly We want to survive and we want to use our special so the first part of this passive ability would be for a different team that you can try to build, but the second part is important. When remaining time is less than 60 seconds, save speed up level 8. When remaining time is less than 30 seconds, save special CT speed up level 10. And I don't know if I told you this, but the difference between speed and special CT speed is just that speed means that is how fast your unit is going to do a normal attack and how often the unit is going to do a normal attack and special CT speed just means the charge time of your specials so that is the difference between that and obviously it's very strong if she self has special CT speed up level 10 because she will come in uh, have her special ready immediately and when it's time to use the special in the late game yeah just read it you will target enemies with a medium range horizontal for 1.5 times damage when remaining time is less than 50 seconds medium range for two times damage and when the remaining time is less than 30 seconds three times damage so yeah if she comes in and under 30 seconds uses her special everyone dies there's no survival no way is any unit surviving that because don't forget uh, normally in the last 30 seconds um, of the rumble <clears throat> the game wants to make sure this is it's a fairer end game and so all of the death up will be gone and there will be more attack up buffs and so on so at the end almost no unit has death anymore and if this special is used yeah you are just going to be annihilated there's no surviving that so yeah this is what this death team is trying to do and so you can see it's not that easy like in other games or in other game modes just put strong units in and be done with it it is a very complex game mode and that's why i enjoy playing that game mode because there are so many teams you can fiddle around with there are so many options to build and obviously yeah there's a lot of rng you can get frustrated at times but <clears throat> most of the times it's a very beautiful game mode and yeah i enjoy playing it and yeah let's briefly go into the second part of the video I wanted to show you because this video is already pretty long but I think we'll still uh, go into that here 
because that doesn't take that long and that is Gather Island. Mm, because I have said everything I wanted to say about the defense team, if you have any questions, write it in the comments or write me a personal message, I will answer you definitely. So let's set this team up. Mm, just check, maybe we even got a death here. I don't know, I just want to see. Just rejoin Pirate Rumble. But I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Okay. Good. Um, Gather Island. Gather Island is the place where you can spend your Rumble tickets, except for the Rumble shop, to uh, upgrade facilities. And yeah, I will talk to you about this islands. So, you will get many many great buffs and rewards if you level up these islands so just make sure you level up the right ones um, first what i want to tell you about this is no matter how bad the island is definitely at least put it to level 10 because the master chopperman missions um, therefore, the requirement is that you have all the Gala Islands on level 10 at minimum and you will get a ton of ton of uh, Rumble Scrolls. So make sure that every island is level 10, but only go further on the islands that are definitely useful. So let's go through them here. You can see, for example, this is the training ground. And if you press on info, you can see how much tickets it will cost to upgrade the island. And as you can see, at the start, it's pretty, pretty cheap to upgrade then it will be more expensive from rank to rank and you see in the middle you need a certain grade to level up an island um, this will be pretty easy achievable until a certain point because i don't know where it is exactly i think this here yeah i think it's place where where does exhibition end i think level 25 if you want to go to level 26 or higher with your upgrades you need to <coughs> have played in the championship and have reached a certain rank there. I think it was uh, you need to rank in top top 500 or top 100, I'm not really sure right now, one time and then you can upgrade uh, your facilities for all eternity because the grade you need to upgrade these facilities that is required is your all time highest grade. It's not from the last season so don't worry about it. Uh, find a season that is easy to play for you and then push one time and if you have placed high once it's more than enough So yeah, you can see here uh, the cost and This island for example is pretty bad because it will generate training points for you every 12 hours, but this is really points everyone has masses of training points after playing the game for more than enough time and even if you don't look at this at the max stage you get 200 training points per day that is essentially nothing really it is nothing it's not even it's <laughs> it's not even a rare recruit a day that you get in training points so yeah don't go with this island over rank 10. next island is the spring of vitality the spring of vitality will increase your max stamina that means your normal stamina that you can see in the top right that you use for uh, pve content and yeah, this is a good island that I've leveled up after I've leveled up some of the other islands just because it will give me more stamina to play events like Blitz Battle or something like that and to general in general make your game easier. Um, next one, the Meat Roaster. Uh, one of the best islands, definitely. This Meat Roaster will give you a stamina meat uh, every certain amount of hours and I have it on rank 28 so it will generate one meat for me every 48 hours and one meat means you will refill your stamina for free every 48 hours which will mean essentially one rainbow gem every 48 hours if you're wanting to farm stuff so very good island max that or get it to a certain point maxing is too hard I mean here look at this the final rank is 20,000 tickets and if you place in the top 500 you will get 9,500 tickets so yeah you can imagine how long it will take to get one island to the max rank it is just just uh, incredible and I think Bandai has designed this 
so that no one can reach that easily and even if they were to reach it they would just make the cap higher then. I think it's not meant to be reached. But good island. Uh, berry cave, ignore that, no one needs berries. Um, yeah, 25,000 berries every hour, it's just ridiculous. Level 10, not higher. Um, these spots are quite good, but if you upgrade them, you don't get more items out of them, because here you, you allow um, for fishing that will give you evolvers and stuff like that. And you, if you have a super success, you will get really good items like evolving skulls and something. But if you level this, you will just get a higher chance. And even at max rank, it is just 10% for super success. So yeah, ignore that as well. The same goes for treasure hunters. Treasure hunters will give you pyrodrama scrolls and stuff like that if you're lucky. But again, it just increases the rate. Ignore it as well, only level 10. Guiding mine. Uh, will give you limit break materials and tablets so this is an island that I will probably uh, max out at some point just because limit break materials and tablets are the most valuable resource in the game and I would even go for higher probability here so probably this guiding mine is my next target for leveling mm. rainbow fruit tree the best island from all of them if you are a free to play player definitely if you are a pay to win player nah, we could argue about that but this will generate a rainbow gem for you every certain amount of hours and yeah i have it on level 28 as well i will gain one rainbow gem every 48 hours so if you uh, calculate that over a year you have 365 days a year so approximately 182 gems per year for free and yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's essentially one, one Sugo Fest to uh, step five for free. So yeah, this island is amazing. Get that up. And then the last three islands here are the um, monuments, which will increase your max ATK. So that means that your normal cotton candy cap is 300 and you can increase that by maxing out these islands. And I have uh, put every of these islands to 80 which increases my maximum to 540. As you have seen before in my PvP teams, the units are 540. Um, if you want to play PvP more, or if you want to have a very easy time in PvE, for example, in Garb Challenge and stuff like this, this helps immensely. So yeah, uh, I would definitely uh, upgrade these islands as well. So I will give you two guides for this so if you're free to play player i would advise you to first go for the rainbow gem tree and when that is too expensive um go for the meat roaster then go for the attack hp recovery monuments and after that you can focus on the stamina pond and on the guiding mine that should be a good way and if you have pay to win player definitely go for these uh, monuments first and then after that go for rainbow gem tree and meat roaster then go for stamina pond and if that's too expensive at a certain point then like me go for the guiding mine so yeah these are the important things you need to know <coughs> about gather island i think i haven't forgotten anything this is a pretty long video as well but yeah it's a lot of information to convey to you and so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and yeah if it's too much for you split it up and yeah have a nice day and i'll see you in the fourth part of the series where we finally go into a match and i will show you what the interface looks like and what you can see in a game and how to pick your opponents bye guys